people because then he will be working against himself. And it's the same with the body of Christ. Why would we be sowing seeds of discord against our brethren or in amongst the body of Christ? We are dividing the kingdom, right? And a kingdom divided against itself shall not stand. But here's the thing. God is not going to have it. Why? Because God's kingdom is going to stand. God's will is going to be done. So if you are partaking in that type of behavior, you are going to be eventually dealt with if you haven't been dealt with already. And it's a serious thing to God. We see with Ananias and Sapphire, it is a serious thing. There's a possibility that some things in your life may be going the way that they have have been going for for this length of time because of the seeds of discord that you may be sowing. And there's many ways to sow seeds of discord. And we're going to touch on a few of those ways, right? We're not going to touch on all of it because there's many ways that seeds of discord can be sown, but we will touch on a few of them, right? And the first one that I want to talk about is gossip. Gossip. This is a major, major, major problem, obviously in the world itself, but unfortunately it is also a major problem in the body of Christ. Let's read some scriptures that talk about gossip. He that covereth a transgression seeketh love. So it says, he that covereth a transgression, somebody that has sinned, somebody that has went against God, seeketh love. And he's not talking about covering it up because obviously God sees everything, right? So it's not like us covering and hiding it from God, but it's knowing that this person is in this situation and praying for them, not sugarcoating it, not if they come and talk to us, act like what they're doing isn't wrong. You know, like we're going to straight up be real with them. Like, listen, you need to stop that before you find yourself in a lot more trouble that you're in. But it says, he that cover for transgression seeketh love, right? That means we're praying for this individual. We're being truthful with this individual, right? We're going before God with this individual and for this individual. It says somebody that is doing that, they seek love. But here's the thing. But he that repeateth a matter separated very friends. And what does it mean by that? We have certain people that what? They're, they're not concerned about covering this person's situation in love. They they can't wait to get away from this person to say it to somebody else. And you know, you know, one of the ways that they're going to start to sow seeds of discord, you know, because they're going to think they playing, you know, God and playing whoever, but God knows all things, right? They're going to say stuff like, listen, I, I want you to pray for so-and-so because they going through this. They'll make it like they, they want you to pray for them, but they really wanted to let you know what was going on with them. And then if you're not careful, if that next person is in mature in, in their salvation or in, 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 in their relationship with God, they'll go on and do the same. Or that individual that first started planting that first seed with them, maybe they won't go on. Maybe they truly will try to cover this transgression. But this individual, they so hot in the mouth. They so, you know, you know, they're so fired up to, to, to share this gossip. They're probably planting this with more than one person under that disguise. We need to pray for this person. We need to touch and agree for this person. And if we be truthful, many of us know people that have done things like that. But it says, let's read verse uh, nine again, 17 and nine, Proverbs 17 and nine. He that cover for transgression seeketh love, but he that repeateth a matter separateth very friends, right? He separated very friends. And this is what God is talking about. This is the thing that I hate, right? Those that sow seeds of discord among the body, right? Verse, uh, Proverbs chapter six, verse 28. Listen to this. A froward man soweth strife and a whisperer, there it is again, separative chief friends, that gossiper, separated chief friends, because what they do is they'll tell this person about what this other person said or what they're doing and so on and so forth. And now a wedge that was not there is now there. And sometimes they come and they don't even be honest about what it is that they're saying or what it is that they're telling. Right. And now they have caused a rift in between these individuals, a rift that can last years. Right. And now especially if they're saved, now 
you know, this is this is a situation where it is affecting the effectiveness of them in their relationship and the effectiveness that they have in the body. First Timothy chapter five, verse 13 says, and with all, and this was dealing with the widows. It was talking about what the widows, but it's something that we can learn from this, right? About the young widows. It says with all, they learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house and not only idle, but tattlers also and busybodies speaking things which they ought not. And we find that a lot uh, among some people, it's not all in the body of Christ that they're going around talking about things that they should not. Maybe they are privy to people's business because they're higher up in leadership. So maybe they have access to know about certain things that people are going through, whether they, their relationship is with the pastor or this person or that person, or maybe they are in leadership and people trust them enough to tell them something and they go and tell this one and tell that one, maybe only tell a couple, but guess what? If these individuals, and I don't think they should even tell them if this person didn't give them that permission to do that, but even if they tell these couple individuals and they are mature enough not to spread it, it still shouldn't even went to them. But God forbid that they can't hold water either because now it done turned into a domino effect. And we've seen that many and many a times if you've been saved and in the body of Christ and in any church, any length of time, we've seen things like that happen. But I love what Galatians chapter six says, right? Because it, it gives us some wisdom and some understanding on how we should be handling these things. And that's why I talk to you guys a lot about all of these exposed videos that people make, they're exposing this one and exposing that one. And I want to say something and I want to, and I want to be transparent about this, right? I talk about that a lot because I think you need to be very careful with that because I think it comes in where you, you have people saying that they're exposing these people because they don't want them to trick you or deceive you or take you down the wrong road. That's cool. The thing is, for some of them, can't speak for all, and I can't even point out who's who, right? A lot of times it's a hard thing. Everybody's not doing this for your benefit. Listen, there's a lot of money to be made on the internet, right? Especially if you got a huge channel and hundreds of thousands of followers, or you're getting hundreds of thousands of views every time you upload a video. There's good money in that. And there's not even anything against that. That's just how the, the internet is run, right? If you make videos and people put uh, commercials on your video, then you're going to make money off of it. That's just how the system is set up. You got people that offer you sponsorships and this and that. Those things aren't bad in themselves. But the unfortunate thing is, is people will chase that and just do anything to get that, right? So they'll, they'll come off to you like, oh, I'm just doing this because I'm concerned about y'all and this and that. But in actuality, they're really not that concerned about y'all. They're really chasing the money. Do I believe there are some that are really genuinely concerned and really want to point out the things that are happening? Absolutely. But even still, we have to be very careful with that. And I will say this as well. I believe that a good amount of these people that they are pointing out, because some of these people I've known for years, seen things they've done and said for years, they definitely are scoundrels and, and charlatans and wolves and sheep clothing. I definitely agree. But once again, it's a heart thing, right? And we can't really judge a man's heart. You know, only God knows. I mean, we can judge what he does that's going against the word and say, listen, we know that that goes against the word and that, that that's not what's up. But at the end of the day, I can't tell you who's genuine and who's not. But I talk about that a lot because we got to be very careful with jumping on that train and on that bandwagon of pointing people out and look at this one and look at that one. We know the story of the wheat and the tears, right? God said, let them grow together. We'll deal with that when the time comes. And, and, and the reason why he said, let them grow together, because the ones that wanted to go in and take the tears out, he says, listen, you might mess around and, and pick up some of the wheat trying to take out the tears because they look so similar. And because some of these individuals belong to me that may not be really that focused or doing right right now. Right. God says, listen, some of them are just an error. I'm going to get them right. So we got to be very careful about jumping on that train and on that bandwagon. Right. But I'm not against, you know, calling out sin or somebody doing something wrong. 
but it's just the heart behind it. I don't know if folks is chasing money, if it's about the bag, or if it's really about you and your soul and caring about, you know, you making it home to be with the Lord, right? But I love, I said all that to say, I love Galatians chapter six because it gives us wisdom and understanding on how we should be handling a lot of these situations, right? Listen to what it says. And, and I'll say this too, before I read it, I just was talking recently, or I just shared a short recently that, listen, nobody can expose like God. When God pulls the covers off of somebody the way that he wants to pull it off, they truly get exposed and we tr truly see them for what they are and they can't even hide. There's no ducking and hiding and getting out of it and lying. They're just naked before everybody like, look, this is what this person was doing. We've seen it in, in Bible days, right? We've seen it in some of the stories of our brothers and sisters that were in the Bible. When God exposed, it ain't no little tidbit. It ain't playing no little clip or something somebody said and not the whole sermon. No, God truly does expose them, right? But Galatians chapter six, verse one through three says, brethren, giving us, giving us instruction, brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual. And I think that's what the problem is with a lot of these people that are sowing seeds of discord. I, I just don't think they're truly spiritually mature, right? Because if they were, they will understand. We've talked about this on our Unity uh, videos before. We dug into 1 Corinthians 12, where we talked about the members of the body and how all the members are important. You guys need to go back and check that out. God said he made the natural body this way, the same way he did for the spiritual body. He said he made it this way so that we could never say to any different parts of the body, I don't need you, right? Every part of the body is important. And when people are unspiritual or immature spiritually, they think that because this person ain't bishop or apostle or pastor or minister or deacon or whatever that they could say and do, or they ain't singing on the choir, they could sing, say and do whatever they want uh, about them. But listen, believe it or not, the scripture says the people that you think are least important are the most important, right? Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, Ye which are spiritual, those of us that are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of what? Meekness. Why? Considering thyself. And if you be honest, you know yourself. You know you ain't where you supposed to be. You know where God necessarily wants you to be. You know, so how is it that... <laughs> 